I'm James Obi, the PT, and this is my review of the Danner Tachyon boot. So when I re-entered the uh, military, I, I'm now in the Army Reserves as a physical therapist, I wanted a boot that uh, had a wide toe box, minimal heel, uh, was relatively flexible, lightweight, uh, but still gave me a bit of protection, and of course, which, which met Army standards. So to be specific, AR670-1 standards. And the Danner Tachyon does meet that criteria. I'm currently traveling for a military school and it, there, I felt like there was decent lighting in this walk-in closet. Um, and you also have the benefit of having multiple James O.B. the PTs. All right, so try not to get overwhelmed. He doesn't bite. If anything, it's more of a suggestive nibble. So I originally went with the Tactical Research Mini Mill boots, but I had a real issue with pinching right here. Okay, uh, on the Tactical Research Mini Mills, they decided to um, make this like corridor nylon feel like sandpaper, but really stiff um, so that it would just piss soldiers off when they would walk like that. Um, I don't know why they did that because a lot of reviewers, um, people that reviewed the boot complained of that and they still haven't fixed it. It kind of fires me, fires me up. But uh, anyway, it was enough after an immense amount of break in, it still was a um, problem with me. So for me, so I decided to go with these uh, these tachyons. So let's talk about this boot. Uh, I'm going to talk about the good and some of the bad, and why I think this boot is pretty good. Uh, I wouldn't say it's excellent, but it's a pretty good boot. So first off, this boot is super light, so I'm a big fan of that. All right, uh, I can go running in this pretty easily. Pretty nice. Uh, gives me a fair amount of protection, uh, but not too much protection. Uh, definitely don't have the ground feel that I have in like a light minimalist boot, uh, like a Zero Shoes or like something from like Vivo Barefoot. Uh, but honestly, like for an army boot, I wouldn't want that. When you're walking around with maybe 60 or 70 pounds on your back or more, um, it's kind of nice to have a little bit more protection when you hit a pebble. All right, that's just, that's just my opinion. All right, this shoe has um, not too much of a drop to it. So you can see it doesn't have a, a massive elevated heel. I'm guessing it's around maybe five to six millimeters. I don't know exactly. Uh, Danner uh, doesn't advertise it, but when I put it on, I can feel that there's a bit of heel to it, but nothing too tremendous. This shoe, uh, if you look here by the shape of the shoe, I, I like that, how it kind of comes in. Uh, that's how I think a shoe should look on the bottom. It shouldn't go too much that way, all right? So uh, it has a nice sort of natural shape to it. However, when you turn it over, it's not perfect. All right, you can see here the toe box actually does taper in a little bit this way when it should be going more that way to allow that big toe to splay. Uh, so that's that's something I would love to see them improve. Uh, the Tactical Research Mini Mill is definitely better for that. And when I first got this boot, I felt like I was being a little bit compressed until I you know, wore it a few times with the boot soaking wet and then eventually it stretched out a little bit. And I would say, I maybe had a little compression here, but really the issue for me was like right here, all right? I just, I felt like it was just pushing into like my fifth metatarsal. Um, and it took a little time for that to stretch out. I think one of the reasons why it took a little bit of time too, is you can see there's some stitching there, it's reinforced, so it just took a bit. And now it's not really so much of a problem, but early on, at the end of the day, that would start to bother me there. But I haven't had that issue in a long time. The boot is relatively flexible, but you know, nothing too crazy. It's, it's still it's still a boot. It does provide some flexibility though. Um, there's no like shank in there, all right? <clears throat> With regards to traction, I think they could improve the traction some by basically just making the, these lugs here deeper. I mean, I've worn this out a little bit, but I'm gonna guess that's maybe like two millimeters, maybe three. Um, I have some shoes that have six millimeter lugs. I would love to see something like six millimeter lugs on this with maybe this exact same, you know, tread pattern. I think that would just help provide a little bit more traction on some like rugged terrain. So I'm a physical therapist now. I'm not really hiking up and down mountains or doing crazy stuff in this boot. Um, but when I was an infantryman, I was. And so um, if an infantryman wants to use this boot, I just don't know how well it would work on some of that rugged terrain. So I would like to see that be a little bit more aggressive. I like this sort of flimsy upper up here. I'm having no issues with that pinching that I was complaining about with the mini mills. However, I wouldn't mind there be a little bit of cushioning behind the tongue here. When I lace this boot pretty tight, what'll end up happening is it'll push these eyelets into like my bone, into like my ankle bones and my lower portion of my tibia. And I find that a little bit uncomfortable. With regards to the insole, I think they have a pretty good, nice insole here. 
I love these like perforated designs. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, you can see some of the perforations there, uh, which allows the foot to breathe. And to complement that even more, the footbed actually has some little perforations in it too. Let's see if we can show that in the video here. I'm looking in the mirror behind me. Yep, you can see that there's all those little holes. So that's pretty cool. I think that's a pretty smart design that allows for um, a little bit of airflow under your foot, which is always, always a good thing. Uh, this toe cap here, so you can see I can compress it there. I don't know, it feels kind of like cheap and flimsy to me. And I dented it a little bit there. I don't know how they would make that better, but I don't know. It just, it feels sort of cheap there. Right. So this boot does meet the Army standards. This is the boot I'm using right now. Uh, this is the best I could find um, that I'm really willing to spend money on right now. Uh, so I think this is um, worth trying it. If you want something that's pretty lightweight, flexible, has some decent width to the uh, toe box, uh, I think you should give it a shot. I have a very wide foot, so I definitely bought these in wide, and the boots do come in wide. So these are a whopping eight wide. Eight wide. So um, in ultras, like the ultras that I'm wearing right now, I, I wear an eight and a half. Uh, in zero shoes, I wear a nine. So um, just realize that if you, you know, army boots often run larger. So whatever your size is, you might want to go down a half, half size. And that's pretty typical for most army boots out there. All right. So um, I'm James O'Be the PT. Hope you liked watching this video. Uh, check out some of our other uh, or my other videos on the, in the playlist section. We go over a lot of the in injury prevention stuff. We just uploaded a cool virtual running clinic. So if you want to learn how to perfect your running form, check that out. Uh, please like, share, subscribe if you found this video helpful. And uh, thanks so much for watching.